Cutting edge science and research across Europe now in Futuris. Newcastle in the north of England is at the centre of a European network making significant advances in research into inherited neuromuscular diseases. They are among the rare disorders also known as orphan diseases because they affect such a small number of people they are far from a priority either for those drawing up public health policy or for the pharmaceutical companies. That means sufferers are often deprived of support or treatment. Louise Forrest is one of the 30 million Europeans afflicted with such a disease. I think certainly as I was growing up and coming to terms with the condition, I wanted to be cured. I wanted to, to be told, you do this and you can get stronger. And there's still a lot of that inside me now. And even my appointment that I have with the specialist, I always say, and, and if I do this, will it make me stronger? And I always get a shock, even though I know that when they say, no, it won't. But at the same time, it's important that I keep the hope to keep doing this exercise because it is, I believe, it's stopping me from getting weaker. Louise has spinal muscular atrophy, a genetically transmitted motor neuron disease affecting muscles throughout the body but those closest to the trunk most severely. Over the years she's undergone many treatments including painful surgery to fuse her spine. One of her greatest weapons in her fight against the condition is her positive outlook. Um, unaided. Mm. Um, I, do. I work full time and I would like to sort of continue to be more successful from that point of view. Myself and my husband would also like to have a family in the future um, and hopefully the condition doesn't cause us too many problems. I do appreciate things are going to be a lot harder for me and my mobility is going to be affected and my strength will be affected again. Um, but I hope that there is the support in place that will enable us to still go ahead and do that. Um, and I hope to have a, you know, continue to work for as long as possible and have a family and just lead a long and happy life. <laughs> By definition, a rare disease affects less than one in 2,000 people. Symptoms are often picked up at birth or appear in early childhood. Because they've received so little attention from health authorities and the drug companies, sufferers, or more often their families, have created their own support groups and associations. By coming together in this way, they've been able to raise public awareness and improve patient care, and, crucially, push for more research to be done into the diseases. It starts with diagnosis, and that's when Newcastle General Hospital's Muscle Centre first begins to help patients and their families. Children with rare neuromuscular diseases can present at any age, from tiny babies right through to teenagers. But in most children, we're beginning to pick up the signs at about the time they're starting school, when they're going to nursery and they have difficulty getting up off the floor with the other children, getting difficulty keeping up with their peers at PE and things like that. That's when we mainly see the first signs. We've seen a lot of developments for the treatments for these kind of disorders over the last few years. We're now 20 years on from the discovery of the first gene involved in muscle conditions and over that period people have developed the animals that they can study to develop new treatments in. They've shown that you can replace these faulty genes, that you can upregulate some of them, that you can modify them in different ways to make them function better. At the Institute of Human Genetics at the city's university, a team of researchers is working on rare inherited muscular diseases. Some 80% of rare diseases involve one or more genes or chromosomal abnormalities. There's currently still no cure for any of the genetic muscle diseases. But I think the encouraging news for patients is that there are a lot of concepts that came from preclinical studies studies in cells and animal models that we are now bringing to the next step, to the clinical level. These things will take time. Um, if you find a new compound today, um, it will probably take uh, at least five to maybe ten years to get it to the market. It's important that patients, when they get a treatment, get a safe treatment. Um, it's important that patients uh, know that there is evidence for the efficacy of treatment. So I don't think this will happen overnight. While the wait's unavoidable, it's also frustrating for those desperate to live a normal life. 
However, they are encouraged by important advances being made on diagnosing genetic disorders. Amongst the number of many recent advances we've made, a quite significant one was developing a better way of diagnosing patients with two very rare forms of muscular dystrophy, those caused by mistakes in the collagen 6 genes. So from those patients who'd previously gone undiagnosed by traditional methods, we've developed a method using cells from the skin to look at the collagen 6 protein in the skin and look for abnormalities there. And that is helping us to, to diagnose these very rare forms of muscular dystrophy patients in a very novel way that hasn't been tried elsewhere and really is a massive benefit to the patient. In order to speed up the search for curative treatments, a European network of excellence called Treat NMD has been set up. It's coordinated by Professor Straub and Professor Bushby. Once again, we find Newcastle at the centre of efforts in this field of medicine. What becomes quite evident with rare diseases is that there's not a single centre that has enough experience and enough patience to do clinical trials. And this is what a lot of patients are waiting for, new treatments, new therapies. So this network of excellence really serves to um, develop and, and implement an infrastructure so that scientists and clinicians but also industry and patient organizations are working together. One of the problems we have noticed was that there weren't any databases that showed us how many patients there are with a specific muscle disease. Since we started about a year ago with our network, we have now established databases throughout Europe to basically collate patient data so that we now have hundreds of patients that we can enroll into clinical trials as well. This pan-European effort is not only helping on a medical front, it's also easing sufferers' feelings of isolation. As the research picks up pace and the rest of the medical world appreciates the far-reaching benefits of the advances in genetic knowledge it's yielding, so those with orphan diseases are finding themselves part of an increasingly large family.